Um, I'm curious to kind of know more about like, you know, as an R&B artist, how you kind of relate some of this stuff back to your music. You know, do you write about heartbreak and like immediately go to the studio and, you know, I know you're a cancer, so you're kind of yeah. emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about your process. I'm an intelligent cancer, though. Like I've I've been I've been to therapy. Like, you know, what I mean, I'm I'm pretty healthy. So okay, he's healed. y'all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I. With everything that I feel, I don't speak on it immediately. That's one of the things that I've learned that I consider a healthy characteristic, which is like let things find their place first before you put them out like in art because art really lives forever. So but I, I do think that art really does imitate life. So a lot of what I write, I hardly ever write about anything when I'm currently going through it, um, unless it's just like the good. Mm -hmm. But the not so good. I, I I let it I live with it first yeah. to decide how I even feel about it because on the other end like with artists again you have to consider sometimes you put out these songs and you see a lot of artists who like retract songs from their catalog and they don't perform them anymore because they say I'm not in that space anymore mm. so like I don't like the feelings associated with that I make sure I never put myself in that position really? which is why I resolve whatever I'm feeling first so that I understand it as art you know what I mean and out of respect for the other party involved, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's triggering for, you You know, you're dating these women and if the experience wasn't great, it's art for me. But if you got to hear this every time, like you might not be healed from it. You yeah. know what I mean? So I try and be considerate um, as well. But again, I think, you know, art really does imitate life. So a lot of the experiences, I, I, the way I see it is, you know, everybody talks about the toxic R&B. Everybody talks about the love. Nobody really talks about the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I think nobody feels one way 24 hours a day. So I try and make sure my music touches every possible feeling that you would have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you won't, even if you're in love, you're not going to feel the, like, feel the love that you love about it 24-7. You know, some days are going to be more tough, but you... It could still be in love. It doesn't have to be like the polar opposite. You can still feel love, but not the love that you desire in that moment. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I try and make life music. Cause I think people life just, music. you know, we, we, we feel stuff, we experience stuff and somebody has to have music for us at any point. And yeah. I just, I approach my music that way. Like these are real feelings. Um, Sometimes I write from a manifestation standpoint. If maybe I'm not, if I'm not in a relationship and there's a certain love I desire, I think I believe that words have power. So if it's something that I want and I got to sing this stuff, I think that's putting it out there and, you know, you attract that stuff to you. So I use it for, you know, for, for what it's worth. And, and I understand it's connectivity to like being a human. So mm -hmm. I always try and keep that in mind. Okay.